What's going on guys? Today I have a tour of a computer I built via my customize a computer service. I also built this computer live on YouTube, so if you have about 2 hours to kill, feel free to watch the build process by clicking the link in the video description. Getting into the specs of the build, the case is the Fractal Design Define R4. I have a full video about this case on my channel and have to say that it's one of the better cases I've used in a build. From how quiet the case is to the overall design, it's definitely a winner. On the front, we have the front I.O., complete with four USB ports, as well as a standard optical drive. On the top, we have room for two 140mm fans, which will be nice for dual radiator-based liquid cooling systems. Flipping around to the back, we have the rear I.O. of the motherboard, another 140mm exhaust fan, the back of our GPU, the Wi-Fi card antennas, as well as our power supply at the bottom. Getting to what I know you guys want to see, here's what's behind that side panel. The motherboard used in this build is the Z77DS3H from Gigabyte. If you're interested in buying this board for your Hackintosh, I have an entire Hackintosh hardware video about this board, so check that out for any information you may need about this motherboard. The processor powering this build is the Intel Core i7-3770K. This is the top of the line processor on the 1155 socket which makes for a great video editing or gaming PC. Cooling that beast of a chip is the Corsair H80i liquid cooler. This is a great solution because not only is this PC's main use video editing, but the processor has also been overclocked to 4.3 GHz. This liquid cooler helps keep the system running at a mere 32 degrees when idle and never seeing over 65 at full load. There are 16 GB of Corsair Vengeance memory here, which will really come in handy when editing video or photos. Moving down to the GPU, this build features the EVGA GTX 650Ti Boost. I also have a Hackintosh hardware video on this component, so check the description for a link to that. This card features 2GB of GDDR5 memory and 768 CUDA cores. Not only does this card have awesome specs for the price, but it'll also play quite nicely with multiple displays as well as editing in applications like Adobe Premiere that will take advantage of those CUDA cores. The card has dual DVI, one HDMI, and one display port, which has quickly become the standard configuration. This machine also has Wi-Fi thanks to the TP-Link TLWDN4800 Wi-Fi card which, you guessed it, I also have a Hackintosh hardware video on, so be sure to check out that description. There's a Silverstone 500 watt power supply in this build which is just about right for this system. There isn't a ton of room for upgradeability but will definitely allow for some more hard drives or the addition of similar components in the future. For storage, we have two drives in this build. The boot drive is a 240GB solid state drive from SanDisk, and the storage drive is a 500GB Seagate Barracuda hard drive. Now that we've covered all of the main components, it's time for some quick and dirty benchmarks. With all the specs in mind, complete with a 4.3GHz overclock, let's try an old fashioned Geekbench test first. After letting Geekbench get its geekiness on, it spits out a score of just about 16,650. This will definitely get your videos exported pretty quick. Moving on to Cinebench, we'll run an OpenGL test first. That epic car chase flew by at right around 50 frames per second, which is very good for a card in this price range. Moving on to the CPU test, Cinebench spit out a score of 8.67 CPU points, which is nothing to be sad about. That's all I have for this video, but if you're interested in having me build a computer for you, check out my customized computer service, which is also down there in the description. Let me know you like this video by going at that like button and telling me in the comments below. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter, also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com, and I hope to see you guys back here very soon.